and glad to see you guys on social media and I haven't been on in a little while because really I have nothing to say. That's really the bottom line. I have nothing to say. Christmas is just next week and the, the new year is coming and I'm very excited about it. And I hope that everybody's doing well. And I know this is a difficult season for a lot of people, but you know, if you just press into the Lord, he can change the atmosphere in your home for you. He can change your life. If you would just surrender to him, no matter what circumstance you're in, no matter how deep the pit is, you know, repentance brings deliverance. As you can see, I always post. So I'm kind of dressed a little bit like the holidays, you know, and I've got green on and I've got my sparklies on and I love the holidays. They're, they're an amazing time for me and I love to celebrate. I love celebrations. So the reason I came on tonight is I wanted to talk to you about obeying the check in your spirit. And I'm going to tell you a little, a little story, but first I'm going to tell you it's so serious to obey the check in your spirit. The check in your spirit means that God has given something inside of you that is going to go off in the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. Okay. Even when you're not saved, you can, you can have checks, but it's not the same thing as when you have the Holy Spirit. Because you can have warnings, but the check in your spirit comes because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And the Holy Spirit will always warn you of danger, of things to come, okay? The other things, they can be influenced by uh, divination, and they can be influenced by psychic abilities and soul power, psychic power where the demons operate in that, that realm of the Spirit. So when you have the Holy Spirit, and you're born of the spirit inside out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water then that check that you get is so serious that it, it can be life and death for you and the bible speaks about it all throughout scripture and i'm going to take a special verse because no matter how somebody speaks and how christianese they talk and no matter how spiritual they are and no matter even if they're church workers because we know church workers have killed their whole families no matter how sincere someone seems no matter if they're in ministry or on the stage no matter what they're showing you on the outside the holy spirit is always working on your inside so everything about that person can look amazing on the outside and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will pull it, put a check in your spirit and you'll get these red warning bells going off these sirens and you're like, there's no way that this person could be evil. You know, they just had somebody on the news, this young girl that went on a trip with a whole group of her friends and they killed her. You guys following me? So no matter what somebody looks like on the outside, we got to walk in the spirit. We got to walk in the spirit. We got to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that he'll be a voice behind us saying, this is the way walk in it. The Holy Spirit will guide us in all truth, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's our comforter. So when you don't obey that check in your spirit, let me tell you some of the things that can happen. So what I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't matter if it's a friend, maybe a new friend, maybe an old friend, maybe a childhood friend, maybe a church friend. Could be somebody you're dating or somebody that you want to marry. And you get these checks in your spirit and you just ignore them. Then you end up being friends with somebody that literally stabs you in the back or turns on you. Okay. Or you marry somebody and they become the worst narcissistic evil person 
behind closed doors, but they got the church face in front of everybody else or the innocent face in front of other people. It doesn't matter if they're church or, or non-church people. They are one person in front of everybody else and another person behind closed doors. They become the victim and you turn out to be the perpetrator because you don't listen to that check that God's putting in your spirit. Okay? So now I'm going to get into what that means. All right? When God has shown me people that I have known in my life, whether I got married to them or whether they were my friends, I have seen spirits manifest in people because God has given me that gift of discerning of spirits. It's a supernatural gift in Corinthians. And I have seen spirits on people and I shook myself off. I'm like, there's no way that this person could have a demon. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, they serve in the ministry. You know, they're very godly, or at least what I see. They talk the Christianese language. They go to church. They do all this stuff. And all of a sudden, I see a demon on them for a few seconds, and it's gone. So, so that check goes off. It's like this warning, like, you know, Will Robinson, danger, danger. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I just ignore it because I'm like, no way, this person... You know, everybody's respect, they res they're respected by everybody. They've got high honorable positions. Uh, they're, they're, they got a good job or, you know, people like them. They're real sweet. They're real kind. There's no way that this person could be evil, but the Holy Spirit is going off inside of me, like warning, like evil danger. Like I said, how many times do you see on the news? And I'm sorry, I'm wearing my creepy contacts or I love these contacts, but <laughs> I got, I got these light contacts in. So don't like look at me and say, oh, she's got something in her. Cause I got the Holy ghost in me, but these contacts make me look kind of weird, but I love them. <laughs> so anyway, listen, the Holy spirit will go off. All right. And, and he, all the sirens will be going off and you're like, there's no way this person could be evil. There's no way. There's no way. Everything seems perfect on the outside. Like everything is just right about them. There's no way because you don't see the evidence of it. But see, God sees things in the spirit that you can't see. God will make you recognize things by the spirit that you, that you know by the spirit of God. Because you get a check and you keep ignoring it. And guess what? You're going to pay the consequences for it. I'm going to take a scripture real quick. And I'm going to share that with you uh, if I can find it. Because I just had it. Uh, hold on one second. My phone is upside down. Oh, great. I lost it. So anyways, okay, here it is. Proverbs 26. The Bible is very clear. And the Lord says, do not believe, do not believe, do not believe a kind person. Listen, people may cover their hatred with pleasant words, but they're deceiving you. Listen to what God of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth is saying. People may cover their hatred with pleasant words, but they're deceiving you. They pretend to be kind, but don't believe them. Proverbs 26. Their hearts are full of many evils. While their hatred may be concealed by trickery, their wrongdoing will be exposed in public. It's eventually, they're going to get caught eventually. Eventually people are going to see their behavior. But they live a lifetime of trickery and deceit. But the whole, when you walk in the spirit, God reveals stuff to you. Because even their family is deceived about who they are. Right? Because they're successful. They're respected. They might, they might, but they can't hold down real intimate friendships. They're, they're unable to do that. So let me give you some ideas of how you can listen to that check in your spirit. Okay. And this is going off the cuff. I didn't plan on this tonight. So number one, one of the main things is if they're on some kind of painkiller, 
antidepressants or sleeping pills. <laughs> this is not a judgment video. I'm just saying there's something wrong with your spirit already. Okay? If they're on painkillers, antidepressants, or sleeping pills, or pot, any opiates, anything like that, there's already an opening for satanic intrusion, possession in their lives, okay? I don't care if they say they're Christian or not, because they are depending on narcotics, or mind-altering or mood-altering drugs that will cause them to have Sybil, several personalities. So you gotta ask them, are you want, listen, but when you meet somebody, a new girlfriend, a new guy friend, or somebody to date, or somebody to marry, you better ask them, are you on any antidepressants? Are you on any painkillers or sleeping pills or opiates or anything like that? Or smoking pot for pain? Listen, you can minister to that kind of person from a distance, but do not get involved in a relationship with them, okay? Number two, if they got unhealed wounds in their life, okay, God's going to give you a check because unhealed wounds mean they're filtering everything that you're doing to them and you're saying to them out of their wounds. That means they're going to Filter everything, and it's going to be toxic. That means if you say something wrong, if you do something wrong, you walk on eggshells with them, and they're going to turn on you in a New York minute. I used to live in New York. That's why I'm saying a New York minute. And those from New York, you know what I'm talking about. If they, again, are unhealed, they're going to turn on you in a New York minute. Those, those checks are going off in your spirit for a reason. Number three, if they have not repented of their witchcrafts before salvation, or if they're currently into witchcraft in any form, even Christianese witchcraft, that means yoga, Halloween, uh, labyrinths, uh, psych, or, you know, angel cards, um, new age practices of any sort, those are dangerous people. God will put a check in your spirit. Those are people that cannot be trusted. Okay, be, or acupuncture or anything because, see, you don't have to participate in something to know it's evil. I don't have to, I don't have to participate in tarot cards to know it's evil ever. I don't have to participate in seances to know they're evil. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. I don't have to be an adulterer to know it's evil as a Christian because I have a Holy Spirit. I don't have to look at porn to know it's evil. I don't, you understand what I'm saying? You do not have to be a partaker in evil to know it's evil, okay? And those people that say, well, I didn't know anything about it because, you know, I'm naive. They're liars. Do not listen to them. The Holy Spirit is the same inside of every individual. So you don't have to partake in evil. I don't have to do heroin to know it's evil. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to know it's evil. So do not trust a person. You're going to get a check in your spirit when they're in new age practices, even as a Christian. As a non-Christian, that's normal. They're already condemned, okay? I'm talking specifically as a Christian. If they are practicing in new age practices, you will get a check in your spirit because everything is going to be filtered out other new age practices, okay? Because they're already introduced a different spirit into their lives. They got a counterfeit spirit. They got some demon spirit influencing them already for them to even partake in a new age practice. That means there's something not connecting between heaven and earth. Okay. There, there's a, there is something missing here that they're not connecting with. Okay. If they're listening to Dalai Lama or Mother Teresa and, or St. Francis of Assisi or, you know, uh, any new age teacher, that means there's no, con there's some, there is a hindrance of heaven and earth right here. And there's a demon spirit that has entered into the spirit realm to influence them to partake in demonic voices. Next one. If you start praying for them and you feel that there's a spirit inside of them that's ready to be aggressive and lash out at you, 
That's a check in your spirit. Some, some, of you, some of you guys have seen in the spirit when you're praying for somebody and laying hands on them. You see a demon in them. That is a red flag, okay? The next one. Listen to that check in your spirit. When that woman or man is asking you for naked pictures, they're not people of God. I don't care how much they go to church. You are yoking yourself up with demon spirits, okay? Because a person of God will be convicted. They won't walk in sin. They won't operate in sin. And they won't cause you to sin. So, listen. If you don't listen to this stuff, you are asking for your own demise. I don't care if they are a Christian in the ministry. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're not in the ministry. I don't care if they're successful. I don't care if they're poor. I don't care if they got money or no money. It's irrelevant to God. The people of God walk in the spirit of God. We walk in the things of God. We know that by the spirit of God that he leads us into all things. He tells us, he warns us, he gives us truth, okay? So we have to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Because if we walk in this flesh, we're going to reap destruction. We're going to reap death. So, okay, I'm almost done here. One more thing. I met this guy one time, okay? It's been multiple times since. <laughs> I'm just saying. In different, same spirit in different people. When you're a servant of God, and you got a calling of God in your life, you are, you are hunted by the enemy and his demons. Okay? So he's going to send assignments into your life. And he's, you are on his hit list because you got a call of God in your life. Not everybody is on Satan's hit list. The people that, that are Christianese that are in church that do nothing for God, but just are religious. They're not on Satan's hit list. It's the people that are actually bold and don't have any fear of man. Those are the enemies of Satan himself. Okay, the rest are enemies of the cross, even though they think they're saved. They're not saved. They're lukewarm, and the lukewarm are going to be vomited out of the Lord's mouth. I don't mean to be like, I'm just saying it. It's, I'm black and white. I'm just saying what the Bible says. I didn't make this up. I didn't, I didn't write the Bible. So listen, when you're on Satan's hit list, you're going to have familiar spirits that come into your life. They're out to take your calling from you. That's all they're after because from the time you're born till the time you die in a short lifespan, you're living for eternity. You're preparing for eternity. So the devil knows those that are, those that are God's those that are making a difference, those that are shaking up the kingdom of darkness. He knows who you are. And I see a lot of you on my social media. Not most of you, I'm saying a lot of you, that are really bold for the kingdom. And when you have a call of God in your life, the devil is going to send Jezebel spirits. He's going to send spirits to destroy the prophets of God, the people of God. I'm not talking about predictive prophecy. Prophets of God, I'm talking about People that really proclaim the word of the living God, the Bible. So guess what? That Jezebel is coming after you. Because that spirit can be in a man or woman. It doesn't like you. And it wants to shut your mouth down. It wants to shut your ministry down. That's why you've got to obey the checks in your spirit. That's why whoever your friends are, they're going to influence you. They're going to push you to your calling or they're going to hate your calling. They're going to be detested by your calling. They're going to try to hinder your calling by, by uh, getting offended by what you say, by what you stand for, and they're going to try to get groups of people to stop you. Follow me here. Or you're going to end up dating somebody or marrying somebody, and they're going to be that Jezebel spirit that's going to hinder and stop the call of God in your life. Because see, it's not about who you marry. It's not about... I, or let me take that back. This life is not about who you marry and, and what a big family you have and what a wonderful life you have and how successful you are in business and how much money you make and how, how what, what titles you have and what education you have. You see, this life is about how much you set, how much you, what is the word? Surrender. 
how much you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's what makes you spiritual. So the devil is after you to stop your mouth for the kingdom of God. That's why so many of you have so many problems. You marry somebody or you got friends that are pulling you away from God. God gave you those checks in your spirit because he loves you. He's not a respecter of persons. He's going to tell you who's dangerous for you. Listen, people in your life, if it's your spouse or if it's your boyfriend or girlfriend, or if it's somebody that you have close friendships with, not everybody's going to be on the same level as you. And not everybody's going to love God like you. And not everybody's going to serve God like you. That's why it's better for you to be alone and a servant of the Most High God than to have a friend around or a boyfriend or girlfriend or a husband and wife and you end up marrying them and all of a sudden your life with God is totally hindered and all you have is problems and violence and, and this crazy behavior and all kinds of trouble because listen, all you guys call me from around the world for counseling because I'm trying to help you. These spirits come in to destroy you. I don't care if they come in the name of Jesus because most of them will. They're not going to come in hoofs and a pitchfork. Satan comes as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. The Bible is clear on that. So we have to be careful and we have to see that God is trying to warn us because he loves us. He's not trying to keep us from enjoying our life, but he knows that this life is influenced by a spiritual realm. So when you get that check in your spirit and you don't obey it and you end up being friends with a man or a woman that's, that's evil, they're not the fruit of the relationship is going to end in destruction. The fruit of whoever you're dating is going to end up in destruction and you guys end up marrying them and it's going to end up in destruction. People don't change unless God enters the atmosphere and changes them. When somebody is not walking with God and they're walking with Satan under disguise, like in Proverbs 26, what I just read to you, they're going to come in and they're going to play the whole you know, spiel of what you want them to be because they're getting something out of it because Satan rewards his own servants. They're getting a high out of it. They're getting a power play out of it. They, they get enticed by deception. Listen, before I was saved, I used to get enticed by deception. All unbelievers do. They love to deceive others, every single one of them. That's why Satan and his demons, Satan can't enter in until the Holy Spirit is, is pulled um, but into a man, but the demons can enter into human bodies at any given moment in an unbeliever. That's why it's so important to know who you're with because your whole life could be destroyed. Years and years of your life could be taken like mine was. Okay, I had 10 years of my life pillaged and then, you know, I was in two marriages that were destructive because these, and I was a brand new Christian, so I was easily deceived at that point. It was a long time ago, but, you know, Satan comes in very craftily and he can come in through leaders from the church. When God is speaking to you, giving you checks, you're a brand new Christian and you're like, man, I'll just marry this person. No. And then God gives you a check and then the church says, well, that's just the devil. No, that's what they told me. That's just the devil. It was God warning me, do not marry them. They're from the enemy. Do not marry them. They're from the devil. You know, my, my second marriage, I married a guy that was, you know, a worship leader in the church. And he was a virgin and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He said at seven, eight, nine years old, very honored and respected in the church and behind closed doors, he was physically abusing me. He would hide in the garage of our house. I couldn't find him for days and he would hide in the heat. He was so possessed. He would come in the house and he would foam out of his mouth. He would hide behind furniture and foam out of his mouth. This was a long time ago. I'm telling you guys. He would hide on the roof of my house. He would walk for hours on the streets and nobody could find him. This guy I married because the church said it was the devil telling me, don't listen to the check in your spirit. That's what, that's what the church pastors were telling me and his family who were leaders and pastors. 
Don't listen to the check in your spirit. So I ended up marrying this guy. And I ended up, it, it, was, it was so much darkness, such deception, such evil with this person that was a virgin, that was saved supposedly, but he was, had a religious spirit. He never had a real encounter with God and very judgmental and looked down on sinners and people that were less than him, like me. So listen, you guys got to obey the check in your spirit because it's going to cost you everything. And then the next guy came and then he came like a prophet into my life and he had all kinds of demons in him. And I had dreams and visions of demons that I didn't obey the check. The first time I laid my hands on him to pray for him, I saw a demon one to jump out and strangle me. I saw it in the spirit. So you guys, the reason I do these videos is to help you. Because 10 years of that person were pillaged from my life. Now, God is a God of restoration. He has brought great restoration in my life. Since I got enough strength to say, you know what? Never again. Never again. And God has brought great people around me. But what I'm saying is, do not be an equally yoked together with unbelievers. What does light have in common with darkness or Christ with Belial? What does righteousness have in common with unrighteousness? So you can, you can be in a relationship with a tear and you're a wheat. You can be in a relationship, you know, with a goat and you're the sheep. You know, you can be in a relationship with somebody that has all the Christianese and has all the right things, but they're evil. Their, their heart is unchanged. They never had a conversion experience from light to darkness. Or, I'm sorry, from darkness to light, not light to darkness. They never had a conversion experience. But they know all the Christianese language. So when God gives you that check in your spirit, you got to look at the fruit. What is the fruit? The fruit of righteousness. The fruit of repentance. God says, bring me fruit worthy of repentance. The fruit of the spirit. Love. Love. Love is the essence of Christianity. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Do they have the fruit of the Spirit? The Bible says an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit, and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Jesus said you'll know them by their fruit. So what God is saying is if you're a good tree, if you're born of the Spirit, you cannot. There's no, he didn't say sometimes. He didn't say once in a while. You might look at porn. You might slip up in your marriage. You might be committing adultery once in a while. Once in a while, you might murder somebody. The Bible is clear. The fruit is one. One piece of fruit. He didn't say the fruits of the Spirit. He said the fruit. You will know them by their fruit. And a good tree cannot produce evil fruit. I didn't write the Bible. The Lord did. I'm just quoting the Bible. I'm not misquoting it. Did I misquote it? See, it's hard. The Bible is a hard saying. It's narrow. That's why so many disciples of Jesus walked away. They said, your, your words are too hard for us. You're, it's too narrow for us. We, we can't go that way. You're, you're, you're too strict, Lord. You're too strict. So, so religion becomes a companion with sin. What now the Bible says is evil. Now you pronounce is good. Instead of obeying that check in your spirit, now you're promoting and supporting homosexuality. You've become reprobate concerning the faith. Now your religious spirit has now joined itself and become friends with sin. Are you guys following me? And listen, I still want you to get saved. I, I'm not here to condemn you because you're already condemned. The Bible says in John 3, 6, 16 and 17, the world is already condemned. You're already condemned. Without Jesus and repentance, you're already condemned. I'm not here to condemn you more. I'm just here to tell you that you can be so self-deceived. Any of us can. I can be self-deceived. I was. That's why I wrote my first book, Beautiful Deception. I was deceived for many years because I don't obey that check in my spirit. I thought somebody was my husband that wasn't going to be my husband because I knew the voice of God. Because according to Yasminology, 
I knew everything about God. There's no way that I could be deceived, but that's the first sign of deception is for you to think that you can't be deceived. See, any of us can be deceived. So that's why I'm here to help you. I hope this really helped you because according to what the Bible says, even the very elect will be deceived because of false Christs and false prophets arising to shine, to show great signs and wonders. He's going to deceive even the very elect of God. Anybody can be deceived. So again, this is not a condemning video, but you know, there's so many that are self-deceived that are religious and they, they don't know about the checks of the Holy Spirit because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They have become reprobate concerning the faith. So if you don't obey the checks, those that are serving God, you're eventually going to harden your heart against the voice of the Holy Spirit and you're going to go into utter destruction. Just like I did. I mean, thank God I'm still alive to this day because any, just like I said, that young girl went off with her friends and they killed her. She went off on vacation with a group of friends and they killed her. Sometimes the man that you marry or the woman that you marry, they can kill you if you don't listen to God. You, you end up thinking about the checks and you keep pushing the Holy Spirit away. Who am I talking to tonight? Some of the people that you married have been the biggest hindrance to the call of God in your life. You sold out your soul for a piece of bread, for a piece of morsel like Jake, like, like what happened with Jacob, right? And Esau. That sex really got you going. You got that soul tie. You ended up marrying somebody that was very, very evil because of your own lust. And now you're paying a heavy price. And now you regret the day that you got married. And you post beautiful pictures all over social media, but you, you disobey the check that God gave you in your spirit, man. You wanted what you wanted more than you wanted God. You didn't surrender your desire for marriage or a spouse to God. Instead, you took it into your own hands and through flattery. Now you're suffering and paying the price that God can't fix for you. You got to repent and try to work it out with God. You choose friends that are leading you into bars and clubs and comedy clubs and cigar bars and everything else. And you once lived on fire for God. You kept yourself pure. You didn't surrender your friendships to the Lord. And now the Lord is watching you. He put those checks in your spirit. He set you apart for himself. You didn't obey the check in your spirit. Now you're compromising your life with the sins of the flesh and you're not going to enter your promised land until you repent and change all of your friends. Some of you have best friends that are in violation against the things of God. They're, they live in complete abomination to the things of God. And you have, you have allowed this to come into your life because you're lonely or you need a buddy or a sister friend or whatever it is to hang out with. And now you're compromising with the world and now God can't use you or do anything through you because you have sold your soul for the morsel of meat like Esau. You have given it up. You've given up your calling for the sins of your flesh, your wantonness and the lust, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life that you're going to do it your way. Now you're going to do things your way because even though God says what's true, your word is greater than God's word. Your knowledge is greater than God. And now you have eaten from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil because you think that your way is better than God's. Even though God said in his word, this is sin. Don't fellowship with unbelievers, but you don't care what God says. God says homosexuality is sin, but you don't care anymore. God said sex is out of marriage is sin, but you don't care. You know, you think you know better than God. You're not going to listen to him. You're not going to listen to him about porn. You're not going to listen to him about lying. You're not going to listen to him about anything. You just want to do things your way. So God says, okay, I'll give you over to your desires. I'll give you, I'll give you over to reprobate mine, to do those things which are inconvenient that are not, that are contrary to God and his word. You know, Halloween is wrong. You know, it's an occultic day, but you're, you become the God of your own mind and choices that you make to uh, practice the customs of the, those nations that are an abomination to him. 
You didn't obey the check in your spirit. You see, now you're paying a price because you don't feel the presence of God anymore. It's like Ichabod, the glory of the Lord has departed from your churches, from your lives, from your relationships, and now you are dead towards God. You don't even feel his presence anymore. You don't feel the glory of God resting upon you. You don't, you don't cry under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You don't feel his manifested presence. You're not convicted of sin. You're not brought to your knees in humble presence of God. You don't separate yourselves from evil people. Some of you even choose to live with people that are an abomination to God, that are full of sin. They're full of the devil and you choose to live with them. Whether it's roommates, whether it's living together outside of marriage, whatever it is. You have catered to the sins of your flesh. And when the spirit of the Lord sounds the trump, when the Lord sounds that trumpet, you're going to be the five foolish virgins that didn't have their lamps burning with oil because you didn't obey the check in your spirit. You see, God puts that check in your spirit to save you, to redeem you, to warn you because he loves you. He loves you. He he, he died for you. While we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. He died for you. But say, so you want to be God. You want to be the God of your life. So tonight, repent. Get with God and repent alone. Go into your prayer closet. Say, Lord, I repent. He says, repent before I move your candlestick. You have left your first love. He's going to remove it from you. You have left your first love because you don't listen to the checks and obey God according to his word. Whether you, whether you agree with it or not, we, we live for God whether we understand it, whether we agree with it, no matter what we think, it doesn't matter. What matters is what God says because he is God. It doesn't matter if you think homosexuality is right. God says it's an abomination. It doesn't matter if you think that sex outside of marriage is okay. God said it's sin and fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. But see, you don't listen to the spirit of God in you. You don't listen to the checks every time he's warning you. Now you're reaping what you've sown. It's a law of the flesh and the spirit. So I pray this minister to you tonight. I pray that you'll get with God alone tonight. See, Satan wants to destroy you. God wants to redeem you. Satan wants to kill you and murder you. And some of you, your flesh, you're like, you're like filled with chains. You're a slave to Satan and all of his, all of his fleshly sins. You are sacrificing to Satan every day. You're looking at your porn. You're looking for a woman to sleep with. You're sleeping with a man that's not your husband. You're cussing. You got bad language coming out of your mouth. The Bible says a man that does not bridle his sin or his mouth. His religion is in vain. He, he has no religion. He's, he's basically worthless. A man that cannot bridle his mouth. Some of you think that cussing is okay once in a while. The Bible says, no. A man that doesn't bridle his mouth, his religion is in vain. He's worthless. It's worthless. Not he is worthless. His religion is worthless. Worthless. Do you understand? This video tonight is a wake-up call of things you're not going to hear in church. That's what the Spirit of the Lord put in my heart for all you saints out there that want God, that want deliverance. You need deliverance. You need healing of the Holy Spirit. You're broken. You're broken. God wants to heal you. He's the balm of Gilead. He came to heal the brokenhearted to set the captives free, to open the prison doors. See, Satan's got you in a prison inside your own spirit, and he's taken over your body and your mind, and you don't even know it. Your thoughts have become his thoughts, the devil's thoughts, so that's why you're so tormented. So you know how to repent? You've got to get saved for real. You've got to get right with God. You've got to repent of all your witchcrafts, abominations, all your sin, your porn, your lust, your lying, everything, your gossiping, your hatred. you got to repent. Repentance is the key. And you've got to have somebody driving that devil right out of you, renouncing Satan's kingdom. I hope this helped. If you need counseling, 
reach me at yasmin underscore suri at yahoo com. Send us an email through the ministry. We will send you the information. I will help you. I will counsel you. So many of you need to humble yourselves and get help. You need counseling. You need spiritual counseling. I am not a psychotherapist. I am not a worldly person. I will not lead you astray. I will always use the word of God. This is spiritual. This is a spiritual problem. The root of all problems are spiritual. Okay? I hope this blessed you tonight. Please listen to the checks of the Holy Spirit. Repent of your ways and turn back to him. Jesus is coming and the trumpet of God is getting ready to sound. We're in the last of the last days. And judgment is getting ready to be poured out. And the age of grace for the church is getting ready to come to an end. And now the times of the redemption of Israel is coming for seven years. God bless you.